Amen. Okay. So, we've heard the prophetic words this morning, and, and, and we've been talking about people feeling that they just can't do it. They're just struggling. They're just saying, well, you know what? We are people of faith. Amen? Amen. And it's mission possible, not mission impossible. Ah. Amen? I watch, in fact, the word uh, impossible actually says, I'm possible. So you need to change that. So when you see impossible come up, it's I'm possible. Because with Christ, you are possible. And everything that God calls you to do is possible in Him. Amen? Amen. So you have a mission this morning, if you choose to accept it, to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Amen? Amen. For those of you who have seen the TV shows that are that old, or those of you who have seen the movies, and they, they, they come to an assignment that comes before Ethan Hawke, which is the good guy, and he sits there and he plays the message, he sees what the problem is, and it says, your mission, should you choose to accept it? And obviously, because there's lots of money, he accepts everyone. So they can make a sequel, and another one, and another one, and another one. But the point of it is, we have a mission. We have Christ within us that gives us the ability to facilitate that mission and succeed. Amen? Now, the amazing thing is that God has also given us a vision. So we know what our mission is, is to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. We know what the vision is, which is, anyone want to shout it out? The vision. Cover the city, bless our neighbors, send to the nation, and touch the world. Amen? That's, that's the vision. That's what the end goal looks like. But in order to facilitate that on an everyday basis, we need to have our values in the right place. Because if our values are not in the right place, we make choices that take us further away from achieving that. Amen? Now, what you value will help you make the right choices. Amen? So if you value life, you'll make the right choices to the people that you relate to. Yes? You see, if I value life and I'm walking down the street and I value life and I value that people should have an opportunity in life and I see someone on the street, then I value life, I'll give. I won't even question it because I want to give somebody the opportunity that I have. And when I was out and about the other day and um, I saw someone, you know what? Everyone's a few steps away from being homeless. Amen? If you were left to your own devices without knowing Jesus Christ, you could have ended up just like them. Amen? And some of us need to remember where we come from and start walking around thinking we've made it and be humble enough to say, you know what, I can make a difference because the grace that God's shown me, I can show to somebody else. We were up in Liverpool the other, the other week of the, the home of the best team in the land. You'll see this season. <laughs> Everton. <laughs> oh, it just makes me laugh. <laughs> But the one thing I saw there, there was so much, where the, where the football stadium is, it's a multi, multi-million pound football stadium, but where the football stadium actually is, and where we parked our car, as you walk through, the poverty in that city is incredible. You actually look in the area of Anfield, you know, the poverty is shocking. There are buildings falling down everywhere you can see. Now, they're slowly redeveloping the area, but the point of it is that God wants us to be able to do the same to our city, amen, to redevelop the area. And I know some people have got visions and dreams and aspirations to run property businesses, but I believe God wants you to run property businesses to be able to house the people that need housing, amen? amen. That in you buying property, doing it out and, and making it big and then moving it on and spinning it around, there'll be enough wealth within what you have that you can build houses, amen? You can build houses for the people. I said this before, there's only 76 people re registered homeless in this city. So it's not a big stretch to solve homelessness in this city. Amen? But if you value life, you'll commit to that. Amen? If you value life, you'll give to the storehouse. This, there is a team that go out every Tuesday night reaching people without homes. Amen? Sharing the love of Christ. Sharing that, you know what, you are a human and we value you and we want to say that there is an opportunity to turn your life around. And thankfully, we have seen people's lives turned around. In Psalms 116 verse 15, in the NET translation, it says, the Lord values the lives of his faithful followers. Amen? The Lord values the life of his faithful followers because he knows that he has put within you the ability to make a difference. You have Christ on the inside of you. The very fact that you have Christ on the inside of you makes you more valuable to get the job done. Amen? Now, as I was beginning to meditate on and God began to show me, he said, 
there, there is this thing for each one of us that we have this thing inherent within us, certainly in the DNA of this body of Christ, is, is faith. And God is stirring his people up to get back to the things of faith by focusing their eyes on the things of Jesus. Amen? Because if you've got nothing at stake, you're just attending the gathering on Sunday morning because there's nothing better to do. But if you've got everything at stake, if your life is based on the life of faith, like, uh, like Steve mentioned earlier, that you know, you're like Peter on the water, you cannot but take your eyes off Christ because you're going to sink. Amen? And God wants his people to be completely abandoned to him and put herself in places that only faith can be spoken of. Amen? That they know that it's the faith in Christ that sees them succeed. And if you have everything at stake, then church and not attending the church is not an option. You need to come to church because you stir up the gift within inside of you and therefore you can do great and wondrous things. Because you know, if I don't get my church fixed, if I do not connect with people that are of like mind, I'm going to struggle during the week. All of a sudden, church becomes a priority in my life because I have everything at stake. And so God is saying to us, he said, you need to value the things that God values and you need to value God's people because it's God's people in and around you that are going to stir you up to do the things of value in this city. Amen. You see, I work in the area of branding. And one of the things about brands is you can say what you want about brands and you can build brands. But the reality, the brand or the power of the brand is what people say about the brand. So the power of this house is not the logo and not the colors or the website. It's what people say about the people. Amen. Amen. And if the people are not in faith, then this is not a house of faith. Amen. Do you get that? Amen. If you are not in faith, this is not a house of faith. Amen. The point of Pastor Jerry coming here and Pastor Michelle coming here was to teach and equip us to believe God for the greater and the supernatural and the breakthroughs that... Essentially, the church has struggled with for many years. The areas of poverty, the areas of sickness, the areas of disease. And he brought someone like a pastor here, like an anvil, banging it on, saying, you can succeed, you can do great things. Amen? And those people have taken that step of faith to go to Bible school and get equipped in the things of faith and now walking in the things of faith. Amen? Is it easy? No, not all the time. But you know what? If, as long as my eyes are on Jesus, I have people around me that have a track record of faith that encourage me to keep going. Amen? You see, this house should be known as a house of faith because every single person here is in faith to do something supernatural. Amen. Amen. That people are walking around saying, I prayed for someone the other day and I saw them get out of that wheelchair and it was not a problem. Amen. And that's where God is stirring us up to because that's how we're going to be known. Not because of our logo, not because of anything else, but by the people that serve in this house. Amen. <laughs> that they can believe God for supernatural works and not only believe God for supernatural works, but actually demonstrate it. Amen. Amen. So values, values establish culture. Values are the very things that help us say yes or no against. In a business, when you have values, it helps you then recruit the right people to align to your values to do the business. Yeah? In church, we need to value the right things. Number one, value Jesus Christ. Amen? But you know, the church has a value statement. The church has a value statement. You see, there are certain things I value in my life that have now closed down the options for, thing in my, for things in my life. I value the Word of God. How many value the Word of God? I also value the voice of God. How many people value the voice of God? Okay. Now, when you have everything at stake, valuing the voice of God limits to what I can get away with. And maybe I used to, but I can't do now. Amen? So like an anvil, I'm just going to go there. I don't drink alcohol because I value the voice of God that much. I've got too much at stake to spend time in comfort and chilling out. Amen? So what do you do to chill out? Well, I pray in tongues. <laughs> what do you do to chill out? I listen to the voice of God and he speaks and he encourages me. You know, if I want to chill out, Jesus is known as the Prince of Peace. Amen? So you can drink however much of that you want, but the Prince of Peace is the one that gives me the peace that I'm looking for. Amen. And it's valuing the voice of God to get his wisdom, his direction, and for what he needs me to do. Amen. You know what? If you are on the battlefield trying to win a war, you don't want to be drinking. Amen. Because you might shoot in the wrong place. Amen. You might shoot the wrong people. 
the reality of the situation is I value the voice of God, so therefore there are certain things that I lay aside so I can hear it. Amen. Amen. If my eyes are fixed on Jesus and I'm here to serve and represent him, alcohol isn't an option for me. Now, I'm not, you know what, you make your own choices out there, but you know what, if you're going to live life in faith, you're going to need to shut down all the other voices. Amen. You're going to need to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're going to be property empires, if you're going to be a world-renowned speaker, you're not going to have the opportunity to do what you used to be able to do. Amen. Amen. I mean, I, I used to play football for a season and um, or for a few seasons while I was at Bible college. And I was a Bible school lecturer. And with Ralph and some of the other guys that come to watch me play football, I got sent off. <laughs> so I'm lecturing in the Bible college and someone's kicked me and I've kicked them back immediately and the red card comes out and I'm sent off. Bible school lecturer gets sent off from playing football. But what people didn't know at the time was God told me to lay it down and I would not lay it down. Because I'm saying, I want to play. This is where, you know, it's tough enough doing faith. At least I could take it out on other people. (laughs) And there's a football that gives me permission to do it. So I can kind of make it look like I'm chasing something. But really, I just want to give one a kick. Amen. So the second week, the second week, everyone comes thinking, oh, well, has he calmed down? Is he going to be all right? So the second week I'm playing, this guy runs past. He, He tackles me really badly. And as he runs past, he karate chops me in the throat. So naturally, I'm like, whoa, okay. And I kicked his leg from underneath him, and I watched him fly on the floor, and then I started walking, so I thought, I'm off again, two weeks in a row. And thankfully, I only got booked, but I subbed myself off. And needless to say, I laid football down. Why? Because it was all about me, and it was where I got my value from, and it was was causing me issues. Amen? Now... (laughs) About four or five years later, I think I was asked to run a football team with, with Raph here. And then the knowledge I learned to control myself, I managed to help Raph on his journey. <laughs> but the point of it is, we had one guy called Jamal, and he, he basically ended up, uh, some guy chinned him, and he kind of knocked him to the floor. And um, we remember working with him in that season, because he got sent off. And by the end of the season, or the last season we actually run the football team, he became my captain. We gave him the captainship. And you know what? The lessons that I learned to control myself, we handed on to Jamal. And you know what? Jamal has now got married. He's got a wife. And you can see what God has done in his life. But he learned to control himself on the pitch. So, you know, just because I'm a Christian doesn't mean I've made it. Amen? Yeah. But you can pass things on by the lessons that you learn. So there are certain things that God wants us to lay aside in this season in order for us to go to the season what we need to go to. Amen. Can I have an amen? Amen. Amen. Cool. So the value statement of Carmel is living in faith and fellowship experientially. Living life in faith and fellowship experientially. That means faith and fellowship go hand in hand. If you just have fellowship, you're just hanging out with no purpose. Amen. If it's just about faith, it's just religion. But if you have faith and fellowship, not only do you believe God for great things, but you have people around you that are praying for you, know your situation, and therefore you can experience the goodness of God, so therefore you can pass that message on. Amen. Amen. So in this house, we need to value the things of faith, in order to do the great things of God. How do we value the things of faith? Is that we put everything on the line that we only know that Jesus can sustain it. It's all about Jesus. You see, if we don't live life in faith, then there's no need for the saints. If we don't live life in faith, there is no need for the saints because I don't need to be encouraged. The Bible said, stir that gift up. Amen? Amen? You see, God is getting us to a place where, how many of you learned to ride a bike when you were small? Yeah. Any of you had stabilizers on the bike? Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but you always have one kid that seems to be on the stabilizers a lot longer than everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> so you're there, you're on your bike, and you're looking cool, and then you've got your little friend turns up, and he's got a stabilizer on. Or worse, he's got one, because he can't quite trust. <laughs> so he's got one on for one way, but he's all right on the other way. And where we're going to in Christ, and where God wants to take this church is this. The time for stabilizers is over. Amen. And God wants us to to call each other out on it. That we can look at someone and say, that's not faith. That's not faith. You need to believe God for this. You need to believe God for that. 
and begin to start testifying of the goodness of God by taking him at his word. The Bible says that he stands over his word to perform it. Amen. And we need to be people that actually believe in what God says. You see, the thing with a brand is this. If a brand is saying one thing and actually the experience isn't, it lacks integrity. So if a brand is one thing and a brand the experience is even better, then that brand becomes a strong brand and everyone gets talking about it. How many of you heard of the brand Apple? It took me seven years, but I got there. Pastor Jerry finally switched from a PC to a Mac. I was like an Apple evangelist, yeah? I told him it was amazing. It was great. It would change your life. Once you use it, you won't go back. And he, you know, he's like, yeah, well, now he's got more Apple gadgets than me. He's got a watch. He's got earpieces. He's got, he's got the, whole, the whole suite. The reality is his experience began to line up with what people were saying. Amen? And for us as Christians, we have an experience of Jesus Christ that needs to line up with the word. Amen? And if we're not in faith, then the two don't line up. Amen? So if we're not in faith and, God, and people are not moving in faith or seeing the testimony of God, then people say, hang on a minute, you're preaching one thing on a Sunday, but you aren't it. Yeah. When someone says, well, you believe in prosperity, and you start saying, you're, you start talking about how good the good of God is, and they say, but hang on a minute, you've got no money. Yeah. All of a sudden, the very message that you're bringing doesn't line up to what you're preaching. Amen? And if we're using other people's testimonies to back up what the Word of God is saying, you're missing the point. God wants to do it through you and in you. Amen. So when people look at you in the eyes, they can see that it's actually truth. You know, I've shared this testimony before, but there was one time we were 250 pounds short on the mortgage. And, you know, I come downstairs, um, uh, and Claire was upstairs, I come downstairs to get to Bible college, and there on the windscreen of our car was, a, was a, an envelope with 250 pounds in. Amen. Now, I've told so many unbelievers that story. And when they look me in the eye, they're like, this guy's not lying. And you can see it makes them uncomfortable. But that's the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. You see, if God could take a people through the Red Sea, amen, do you not think he can challenge and change your situation? Amen. If God in the midst of the rain that comes down and says, build an ark and take people to safe passage, do you not think he can do it in your life? Amen. Some of the things that you do, you know, the greatest miracle that you experienced was that you gave your life to Jesus. That took more faith than anything you'll ever do in your life. Making the transition from living naturally to supernaturally. So everything else should be easier. Amen? The only thing that makes it hard is that we're valuing the wrong things and we're worried about what people say about our journey. But we need to say, no, don't worry about what people say because my God will perform. Amen. Amen. You see, here's the thing with David. How many of you know David? Yeah? yeah? David, David, before he fought Goliath, had to take on lions and bears. Yeah. So what you're going through right now might well be just a lion or might just be a bear. Yeah, just a lion and just a bear. You know what? You still need to know God if you're going to take a lion and bear on, aren't you? Amen. Yeah? Anyone tried it before? No. <laughs> and none of us probably want to try it before. But some of our situations resemble that of a lion and a bear. And it seems like we're wrestling it for ages and ages and ages and ages. And we're looking for breakthrough. And God says, once you learn that one, here's a lion. <laughs> here's a bear. Because I'm stirring you up to go to the next level. Amen. Amen. We talked about Elijah and Elisha. Elisha could only do what he did because he had an example in his life by Elijah. Amen. And if you look at the parallels between Elijah's stories and what happened with Elisha, you know, the widow and all that sort of stuff, raising a boy up from the dead, it was a similar journey, but he had seen it happen. Amen. I have Bella, there's Bella there, and there's Leon and there's Taylor. They're only going to follow me to the degree that I can demonstrate it. Amen. Amen. You see, when I was in church many years ago, before I backslid, I was about 11, 12 years of age, I couldn't find what everyone was talking about in the areas of faith. People were talking about faith, but no one was demonstrating it. And I remember getting a, 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 a videotape, if those of you can remember videotapes, and it was a videotape of this white-haired guy, although he's slightly dark going white, called Jesse Duplantis. And Jesse DePlantis was talking about how he began to trust God for big things and how God came through for him time and time again. And whenever I went and said, there's this guy called Jesse. Oh, you don't want to listen to him. <laughs> oh, no, he's one of those American guys. He's ripping everybody off, telling the stories. But when you examine his life, it's a life of faith. Amen. 
And if you're not living a life of faith, then people try and explain it away. So I ended up leaving the church because there was no integrity in the church that they preached faith and they didn't see it. Now, there were other reasons why I left the church. Girls and drink and partying, yeah? But, but the reality was, if I would have known that a relationship with God can propel me into my purpose and that through faith I would see great things happen, I wouldn't have left, amen? And if I had people around me that could say, this is how you do it, I wouldn't have left. Amen. So now I'm faced with a situation. I have Bella, who's 11 years old, in the same place I was, looking a lot prettier than I was back then, yeah, with more hair, (laughs) to make the right choices. So if I value the things of God, it's going to then affect how I focus on the vision and achieve the mission. Amen. Amen. So go to Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. I'm going to read that now. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and sin that so easily and cleverly entangled us. Let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us, looking away from all that will distract us and our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and completion of his work. Amen. You must understand that faith produces faithfulness. Faith produces faithfulness. Where there is no faith, there is a lack of people being faithful and they walk from the things of God. Amen. What you value individually is what we become as a church. Amen. What you value individually is what we become as a church. It becomes what you're known for. So if we value prayer and everyone is praying, we'll be known as a church of prayer. Amen. Do you get it? If you want to be known as a Christian and you value Christ, then you will be known as a Christian. Amen. Because people will see you as a little Christ doing the things of God and demonstrating the things of God. This did not stop in the book of Acts. It carries on today. Uh, There are people sat around this auditorium that can testify of the goodness of God and his miracle working power still happens today. Amen. He has healed cancer. You know what? He has done some incredible things just in my life. I remember Bella. I'm using Bella as an example here today. But you know, Bella, when she was born, she was a miracle. She was a miracle for why? But when, when Claire went into hospital, they, they got her in and, and, you know, she was doing the old push and, and the baby was supposed to come out and Bella had turned around. It's amazing how you, even that small, you can see their personality <laughs> doing things differently to the way that you want them done. Anyway, so they found that this wasn't a head they were looking at, it was a butt. Bella had changed the way she was facing. It took them by surprise. The problem was I'm stood there, Claire's sort of led there, and um, there's all these nurses and that around me and doctors, and, and they're like, oh, um, and I heard this. They said, oh, I hope what happened yesterday doesn't happen today. That doesn't inspire you in much faith, does it? <laughs> and then I looked at one of them, and it was like, oh, man, I said that out loud. And, and basically, within a couple of minutes, they said, right, everybody out the room, everyone out the room, and they basically decided to whisk Claire into theatre. So they whisked Claire into theatre. I'm left with all these scrubs on and, and stood there. I'm like, it's just me and God. But I know, Lord, you promised that you'll give us a child. Amen? You know, it was a miracle. And we went into, we went into the theatre and, 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 you know, they do what they do. And, they, and all of a sudden, they pull this baby out. And I'm sat there, great. And all of a sudden, you hear this big loud cry. And whew, hooray, we're there. But what we didn't really notice, that God was with us, and we didn't notice until we got the notes back, 
you get like this book and you get notes about the previous pregnancies. So when Claire was pregnant with um, Leon, we read through the notes of Bella. And what they said is that Bella actually had the umbilical cord wrapped around her neck and they had to resuscitate her. So they slapped her on the butt, which then made her wake up and cry and then be, be in the place that she is. And thankfully, she's 11 years old. Amen? Amen. But it's the miracle working power of God that you need to know the word to stand in faith in those situations. You see, in the midst of that situation, I, I could have given up all hope, but I then said, God, you said, amen? Yes. You said and stood there. I declared what God has said and I had the confidence to go into that auditorium or the, uh, what, what they call it, theater, into that theater to be able to do what they needed to do and Bella was born. Amen? But I have a testimony of the goodness of God because naturally she could have been tickets. Amen? And this is where we need to be. Is sometimes is that you don't know what's in you until you're pressed. Amen? You don't know what's in you until you're pressed. It's like the toothpaste tube. When they squeeze you, the word should come out. Amen? But some of us are not valuing the word enough to put enough word in us that when we're faced with situations, we begin to find another plan based on our own ability. And then we spend the rest of our lives paying for it. Amen? So where the house of God has no faith in place, there is no faithfulness to serving. Amen? Because there's no need to serve. Because what's the point? I come, I get my fix, I go home. It's a bit like KFC. I come, I get my food, and then I leave. It's fast food church. But God wants us to be absolutely immersed in his church. He wants us in a position that every single person is saying, so what are you believing God for? What are you believing God for? What's God done for you this week? Well, you know what? I pulled off this one property deal. Oh, that's amazing. When are you going to get that skyscraper that you know, God promised you? Always believing God for more. Yeah. Amen. Because the testimony of God is believing God for greater than what you currently have. But do you have the relationship with God to trust him to take you into the places where he really wants to take you? Or are we pursuing comfort? Amen. You need to have the conviction that Christ loves you and he will not let you fail. Amen. Not walking around, just doing everything you can to maintain comfort. Because God never called us to be comfortable people. Amen? He called us out from once we were to be in a light on a hill to testify of the goodness of God. In uh, Hebrews 10, 24 to 25, it says, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. So the first thing I'm going to touch on is that values create culture. Values create culture. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who by faith has testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us, God wants us to value certain things in the life that help us to become a success. The first thing he wants us to value is obedience. When God speaks, do it quickly. Amen? When God speaks, do it now. Save yourself the, the frustration and the pain. Just do it now. And it may seem completely left field, but God says do it. And there are people sat in this auditorium that God has spoken to, and all you've done is just keep pushing it aside, sliding it underneath the bed, pretending that it doesn't exist. And God says, pull it out and do it. You're praying, praying for me for breakthrough, but just like Elijah, when he was told to go to the brook for the ravens, you're looking for provision, but you're not prepared to go to the brook. Yeah. Amen? The weights and snares that so easily entangle us are the insecurities that God will not come through. Or a story that you may have heard where God failed somebody and he's going to fail you. Amen? Yeah. You don't know God enough to know that he will not leave you or forsake you. And God wants you to be able to say that with a conviction that he won't leave you or forsake you because you know he's in every area of your life and will not let you down. Amen? Yeah. How many times do we hear every week that God will not let you down? Amen. And God is saying, get out the boat because he won't let you down. Amen. Amen. Yes. Pastor Jerry came back last week and told his story where he's going in front of business people. Amen. And how God come through for him. Your life should have those stories. Amen. Yes. That God will not let you down. So I look at the better situation. I know that God will not let me down because I've seen him come through. Amen. Amen. 
I've seen it come through from my finances. I've seen it come through for, for my children. I've seen it come through in our houses situation. I've seen God come through so many times. Amen? Amen. But it doesn't stop. Because <laughs> faith is a relationship. And because if faith is a relationship, God was always going to want to take us deeper into relationship with him. So we know he's even more good than what he says he is. God wants us to value productivity. Amen? How many people do you talk to and say, how was your week? And they go, busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. No, God doesn't want you busy. He wants you productive. Amen? <laughs> so, so how are you doing? I'm productive. Amen? I'm productive. I'm doing the right things in order to walk further to the promised land that God has promised me. Amen? I am making decisions intentionally to succeed. Jesus had a mission and he had a mandate. Amen? And he knew he was surrounded by a cloud of witnesses and he was put upon this earth to begin to demonstrate the faithfulness in his father to show that you can triumph over death. Amen? Whatever your situation is, may be a death situation, but God promises you this morning that there is resurrection waiting to arise. Just give him permission to act. Amen? You see, the weights and snares can be sin. Amen? They can distract us. The gossiping. You know, I, God just spoke this thing to me, and I thought it was amazing. Talking without authority is gossip. There are things that God has put in your life, and you're getting pulled into and discussing, where God says, just leave it. It's distracting you from where he wants to take you. Amen? Authority without action is posing. You can walk around in your garments and be the king or the, or the lord of the house, but if you're doing nothing, it's just posing, isn't it? Amen. But when we, when we talk with authority, faith is our voice. Amen. When we talk the word with authority, faith is our voice, and faith is backed up by corresponding action. Amen. God wants to see his people beginning to not only talk the talk, begin to walk the walk and demonstrate that he is alive and well today. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Don't get distracted. Don't have a loss of focus. Focus on the word. Focus on what God has said to you and put those words on your wall. The Bible says make it plain. Amen. Make those things that you're believing God for this year plain. This is the year of Jubilee. Yeah. And for some of you who have not taken the steps of faith to say, my Jubilee equals this. Yeah. What does Jubilee look like to you? Write it down and put it on your fridge. Because some of you visit the fridge more than you visit the Word of God. Amen? <laughs> I include myself, by the way. <laughs> we always go to the fridge, don't we? Milk, for tea, food, or when we're a bit depressed, oh, just grab that cold pizza. And, 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 and scoff it all when actually it would have been better if we just spent some time in the Word. Amen? And filled ourselves up with the bread of life that gives us the ability to focus and flourish. Amen? Amen. The second thing about values is this. Values help you build. It goes on to say, let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us, looking away from all that will distract us and focus our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of faith, the first incentive for our belief, and the one who brings our faith to maturity. So we need to value endurance and active persistence. Amen? If you value endurance and active persistence, you'd look around in this auditorium and look for people older than you that can testify of the goodness of God. Amen? There's Pastor Bob and Mary sat back in the corner, but I can tell you now the faithfulness of God in their life to inspire me and Claire and other people to go out on the mission field and make a difference. Amen? Amen. You see, when I was stood on top of a bus in the middle of a field in an area in Romania where there was no running water, I then began to see just how much poverty there was in Europe. Amen? And that became one of my motives for doing what I'm doing now is building a business. Amen? It's not about making money. It's about influencing good. Amen? Amen. So therefore now I know one of the channels that I can influence is there's a place in Romania that's got no money and they've got no running water. Amen? Yeah. We can make a difference. Yeah. 
But it's people who are faithful, who have gone before me, that can testify of the goodness of God. And you know what? Take them out for coffee if you're struggling on the things of faith. They've got some amazing stories to tell. Amen? But they're just stories if you're not hearing them. Amen? You need to see it in their eyes, the glint in their eyes that God is still moving in their life. Amen? They have something to give. They've endured. Amen? They're actively persisting after the call of God in their life. And even now, they don't want to slow down. Some of them are, you know, some people I know are becoming bionic to keep going. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? Technology's moved on. It's like, I will keep going. <laughs> to do the things of God. But you need to surround yourself with people that are actively persistent in the things of God. Pastor Jerry's another one. Yeah. Amen? There are people that have been in this congregation for 10, 15 years doing the things of faith. Wayne and Rose, they've been here for ages. <laughs> he's, st- he's still here he's still here but the point of it is is that they're doing the things of God on a regular basis they're believing God for supernatural things they're working around in the background but they've seen God do some amazing things with the ministry as we can see it today amen they don't run around with a big trumpet they just get on with it and we have the ability to say I need to find that wisdom I need to speak to these people because it inspires my faith amen it stirs up the gift within me and says you know what I'm not going to just be comfortable anymore because I know it can be done. Yeah. Yeah. And for some of you, I need to tell you now, it can be done. Amen. When people have said it's impossible, you can say, I'm possible. Yeah. We need to value both faith and fellowship. We need to value both faith and fellowship. Focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of the faith. We need to be around people that have their eyes fixed on Jesus. Amen. Amen. That can say, God will not leave you and forsake you. And this is how he did it for me. And this is how he can do it for you. Some of you are busting the gut trying to earn as much money as possible to buy a house. And God is saying to you this morning, stop and trust me. Because there's money coming in different ways. Amen? There's money coming in different ways. There's money coming in different ways. Sometimes God will let us get to the end of ourselves so you can see the beginning of Him. Amen? There are inheritances already being stored up for you that you're not even aware of that God's going to pay out on. Amen? There are people that God's going to bring across your path that are going to inspire you to believe you for the impossible and therefore they're going to mentor you and they're going to help you. Amen? For some of you, you just, you're asking God for money and all you need to ask God for is a mentor. Ed Cole says this wonderful statement. He says, man prays for victory, but God gives strategy. Amen? And there are plenty of people in this house that have strategy. You need to get yourself around people of strategy and begin to ask God, show me the wisdom in order to do what I have. You see, sometimes we're chasing people with big, long CVs. But what you need to do is chase people of character. Amen? Because it's the people of character. It's the people of faithfulness. It's the people that are consistent and persistent are the people that you need to spend your time with to say, well, what makes you so consistent? What makes you so persistent? Amen? Why do I keep going? Because I'm in love with Jesus. I know I can't be moved. I know that God has protected my family and he has began to raise them up in the things of God. You can't put a price on that. Amen? You see, you, you, might, you, you might move for you, but then throw your next generation to the wolves. Stay in the house that God has placed you, unless he says otherwise. Amen? Amen. You know, I know now, my children are in the Carmel Christian School. They have got stuff, that, they've got stuff being put into their lives on a regular basis that I never had. Amen? Amen. That they are being brought up and schooled in the things of God. Amen. Because I value Christian education, Amen. that's why they're there. Amen? Yeah. And so there's nothing you can do. I will keep them there. Amen? And they might fall out with a teacher or they might, you know, get upset about something. But the reality is they ain't moving. Amen? Amen? They're staying there because the point of it is, is the principles and the word of God is going into their hearts. Amen? Amen. And it's staying there. You know what? I could let them go. I could let them go and do their own thing and say, well, you know, you make your own choices. I don't want to do that. Amen? Amen. I make my choices for my kids. Amen? Amen. Because I'm a steward of them. So, Bella, you're going nowhere. (laughs) 
And the last thing I want to touch on is that values make us valuable. Who, for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him, endured the cross, disregarding the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and completion of his work. Value finishing the work. Amen? Amen. The work of Carmel Church has not even got started yet. Amen? There is so much more to do. These 20 years were just about putting the foundation in place. We want to build on from that. Amen? Amen. And God knows you need coffee, so he's brought Starbucks in. <laughs> yeah? Or I think there's a pizza place and all that kind of stuff. But the point of it is, is this, that God is bringing people across our door because he wants you to testify of the goodness of God. Amen? These last 20 years have been equipping you so that now you have the voice of faith so you can pass the message on. Jesus spent all his time in putting into disciples, then went, and so therefore the disciples then went and spoke the word of God to the nations. Amen. The principle remains the same. You will be raising people up. You will be discipling people so they may run further than you. Amen. This is a generational work. So value finishing the goal. You cannot convert other people to Christ if you don't have the conviction of Christ. You need to have the conviction of Christ on a daily basis. That when they look at you, they choose Christ. Just by the example of you. You see, people of value, they exude it. You can see what they value. In fact, you can look at different people and you can see what they value instantly. If they value names and watches, they're all covered with it. Yeah? They value gold, they're covered with it. Yeah? But if they value Jesus, there's something in their eyes that stops you in your tracks and you want to listen to what they say. And their voice is like that still, small voice speaking into your situation peace when all around you is chaos. The other thing we need to value is influence, not money. Influence, not money. If you pursue God, you're following with word and the spirit, you'll get influence. Amen? Money will come after. Stop pursuing money in order to get the platform. Amen? You don't need a platform to be influential. Amen? Anyone knows Dorothy? Can remember Dorothy? There's one that didn't have a platform. But man, was she influential. I was stood in that bookshop where someone had literally spoken to her the week before. And, she, and he came to this house because she'd given him the gospel. And he came to her funeral because she shared the love of God. He said, I just want to pay my respects and see what this God stuff is about. Amen? Amen. You don't need a platform to be influential. You just need to be loving Jesus more than anything else. So how do we get a valuable church? Values create culture. We are the culture of the kingdom. Amen? That's what we should be about. Our eyes focus on Jesus. We live life in faith and fellowship experientially. We know the two live together. We are united with one another because you are my brother and you are my sister. Look next to each other and say, we are related. We are family. Amen. We are family. The second thing is that values help you to build. Values help you to build. It helps you put the right building blocks in place to begin to build something that the world can see that is good. And the third thing is that values make us more valuable. Faith produces faithfulness. And so I want to inspire you this morning to know that faith in God inspires other people to sit next to you and say, I want to do the same. This is an adventure. I look at the disciples' life. They were adventurers, amen? They were adventurers. They were willing to go the extra mile. They began to do some amazing things because they knew that their hope and trust was in God and God wouldn't let them down. And even in death, even in death, they knew they were going to a far better place, amen? They were absolutely had conviction that the way of life that Christ had showed them that they could live. To the point that they knew that if Christ triumphed over death, so can they. So can they. They were absolutely convinced. The greatest value that we need to hold aside from Jesus is love. Amen. And your challenge this morning is this. Take the faith that you have 
and express the love that God has shown for you. Amen? When you go and share your testimony with someone, you remember just how much God loved you and sent someone across your path. You're sat here today because someone had the bravery to tell you the truth. Amen? And God is saying that truth that you've learned, now pass to somebody else. Be brave. Be bold. Be strong. You see, love for God will see us choose his kingdom more than anything else. Love for Jesus will help us choose, help others choose his kingdom. And love for the Holy Spirit will, will inspire other people to follow him. This morning, right where you are, what has God said for you in 2018? And what's stopping you from going out there and doing it? Just close your eyes. Lord Jesus, I just pray for each and every person here this morning. And I pray that they have the confidence to write down what you have said for this year. Lord, we know you work outside of time. But Lord, I thank you that you can fast forward things into the natural from the place of the supernatural. And I thank you this morning. The message that God is saying don't give up. Don't give up. I pray where you sit, do you experience the anointing of God, the anointing of God to be able to do what God is requiring of you, that you have the bravery of God to tell other people. Amen. This is not a time to be quiet. It's a time to tell and testify of what God's about to do. When you tell people, it inspires faith. I thank you, Lord, right where everybody is sat, that they will know this week of the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God to begin to step out that boat. The Lord, they begin to value the word of God above everything else. The Lord, they begin to value the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I pray this morning, as they carry the love of Christ, that, Lord, you will inspire them to begin to share what you've given. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.